Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike here at Mike's Weather Page. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Drinking coffee here in Oldsmar. <laughs> this is our little quickie update on, on things right now. We obviously got Nicole to talk about and uh, show you all the latest and uh, greatest from today's models and what to look for and what I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, what we got coming. This is uh, definitely sneaky. Uh, a lot of folks are... are kind of caught off guard uh we got hurricane watches up now for a big part of florida's east coast this is the four o'clock uh remember now everything's bumped up an hour because of the time change so the nhc now updates at four o'clock and ten o'clock uh this is our current track it's going to do that zigzag that we've been talking a lot about there's a high pressure to the north so it's going to have a little window to try to develop right now it's a subtropical system and uh what that means are the winds really extend out far from center the uh, this orange circle is the area of tropical storm force winds currently. <laughs> so that's about three times as wide as the Florida Peninsula. So this is a, a one of those cases more than ever. You don't focus on that center line because these tropical uh, force winds will extend way north of center mm -hmm. um, for sure. Here's what it looks like right now with water vapor satellite. And uh, we got some dry air. This yellow stuff is dry air rolling rolling around through here. Big, broad, low, trying to set up and get spinning. Uh, the dry air is expected to uh, possibly be gone by the time this thing ramps up on its final approach to Florida. So we got to watch that. Right now, it's it's kind of a sloppy system. Pressures are down. I think they're down to 1,000 millibars right now. So it is trying to intensify. Uh, spaghetti models here on Tropical Tidbits, very, very tightly clustered. You, you kind of want to see this. The high pressure is pretty much locked in place. Uh, this thing is cruising through the state of Florida. Probably going to get really close to popping on over to the Gulf of Mexico before it hooks back to the northeast. Um, if you go back to look at the track here, look at look at the timestamp from, from 1 p.m. Friday to 1 p.m. Saturday. 24 hours, this sucker is going to haul booty out of here. So the, the definitely going to have windy, stormy conditions along the east coast but it's not going to linger. Most of this should be gone for everybody, at least by Sunday, 100%. Most of y'all to be gone by pretty much Saturday. Um, cold air is on its way. we got a big cold front coming down that's pulling this up and sucking it up and pushing it out of here. So still going to have squally weather, tropical storm expected in Georgia here, 1 p.m. on Friday. Uh, we can, we're can we going to see squally weather coming in off of this uh, Atlantic Gulf Stream. So still going to be storms, but at least they're not going to linger. Um as this thing gets on out of here. So the spaghetti models are tightly clustered. Um, the timing here is a great map that's on my site. This is uh, when you can start to expect tropical storm force winds. We got Wednesday 8 a.m. We can start to see tropical storm force warnings. Now the Bahamas are already under hurricane warning. Their, their stuff's going downhill uh, starting tomorrow, basically. Um, hurricane warnings for the Bahamas. Hurricane warnings will be coming for Florida soon, guaranteed almost, can't, almost. Um, that this takes time. Um, 36 hours out is when they usually issue warnings. So we'll probably see a lot of these watches turn into the warnings maybe tonight, uh, Monday night. But Wednesday, 8 a.m., Wednesday, 8 p.m., you can see this. So the travel, you know, this thing's come just a couple of days. Uh, we can see tropical storm force winds into South Carolina Thursday morning. And um, the, like I said, everything will be out of here hopefully by the weekend. Uh, I guess the only good news with this system or anything is uh, – rainfall so far so far is not expected to be much uh fast moving there's you know some of the models are suggesting some dry air still so at least for now we're not seeing those those crazy high numbers that we saw with ian you know we were seeing 20 inches of rain plus and it verified so until i start to see that i'm feeling confident we're not going to see um anything too bad now we are going to have isolated flooding no doubt i mean you're going to have your normal four six seven eight inches in spots but we're not going to see that prolonged 15 20 inches that we saw with ian it, as of now, and, and this is pretty confident. By two days out, we sh we would be seeing signs that we possibly could see that much rain. So that's probably, if anything, one of the good things. Uh, here's a, here's a great map. I uh, share maps like these all the time. This is from our good buddy Dennis Phillips here at ABC uh, local Tampa Bay. Um, inlet effects we're going to see these watches and possibly warnings extend to the Florida West Coast. Here, our system is pretty much coming through the state and if our pressures remain strong which i'm going to show you some of the little, little the models here in a second we can see some watches and warnings here uh for a good chunk of the florida west coast uh so you know it's this is not just an east coast system uh it's not going to be an en 
for the West Coast, but we will have squally weather coming in off of that Gulf. We could have some surge, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. Now, the Sierra map I have linked on my site. This kind of shows you what's happening. We've talked a lot about this the last couple of days. I don't have a map up right now showing it, but starting tomorrow, we're going to have persistent winds for two days, three days, coming into to the uh, East Coast, specifically Florida, northern and central Florida here. Uh, significant beach erosion, unfortunately. We have uh, a full moon on Tuesday night and Wednesday. They call it a beaver moon. So we're already seeing some of these surge estimates here around Brunswick, um, in the Jacksonville. Pretty high numbers. So we're going to have to pay attention to this. Um, this storm gets any stronger, we could see, you know, more uh, surge closer to where the eye comes in. So surge is going to be an issue beach erosion um very concerning for some of the counties on the east coast uh they've already had ian damages and they have not recovered yet from that so that's story number one when we're starting to see some surge here now in tampa bay because if our system comes out and hooks back we're going to see a low pressure setting up which could push some water here for west central florida um and in the last map here before the actual models the ocean heat content waters are 82 83 84 degrees golf not so much but this area right here is still about the 82, 83, 84 range. So it's plenty warm to try to get going before landfall. Golf is kind of cooling down a little bit. So I don't expect any sort of rapid intensification in the Gulf. It, it, it'll probably likely just maintain whatever it is when it crosses through the state of Florida. All right, so your worst case scenario model is the h wharf. Now the h wharf uh, is, is betting that we get a, a core. You got to have convection around the center in order to become tropical. And the H wharf and some others are suggesting that by tomorrow, this thing could start to develop tropical characteristics. And once this thing gets a, a core and convection, it can actually start to develop a little bit. So this is the worst case model H wharf, but I'm telling you, the H wharf has done a great job. It is right 75% of the time as far as intensity goes. So I got to share it. You know, 974 would be borderline Cat 2, high-end Cat 1, but Cat 2, see, we're starting to get some really bigger wins. So track not so much the best for the h wharf, but what this would do is we, it would plop out onto the other side and still maintain some sort of intensity. And this is where we're starting to see, even on the Euro, more wins possibly now for the Florida West Coast. This would be later into the day on Thursday. The, the, the rains and stuff are going to start as early as uh, Wednesday. Um, you can see that here. Let's take a look at that real quick on the on the H wharf. I like this model because it's, it's uh, high resolution um, with uh, your uh, radars and, and et cetera. It runs every um, six hours. But even though our system is going to be well offshore because this thing's three, four hundred miles wide, five hundred miles wide, we're going to start to see effects as early as uh, Wednesday, definitely into Florida. Um, this thing is going to possibly um, make landfall uh, Wednesday night. The, the, the timing of the models have caught up a little or sped up a little bit. So it looks like we could have an overnight Wednesday landfall well, from whatever develops. But these, these squally bands is what we got to worry about. All the models are showing some sort of squally bands. And, and people always ask, tornadoes, 100% possible. We got that warm Gulf Stream. These squalls are going to be developing throughout the day on Thursday, daytime heating. So, yeah, we likely will have a tornado watch across the Florida Peninsula um, as this thing spins across the state on Thursday. Uh, and then the same setup. If this thing does what some models are saying and, and maintains some sort of low pressure out here, we're going to see squally weather into uh, the west central parts of Florida. Could see some surge um, as this thing uh, plops out in the Gulf. And again, this is Thursday evening, Thursday night. So the good news, at least kind of, if there is good news for our folks that were hit with Ian is going to your North usually means you won't get the worst part of the storm. You're going to get some squalls that are going to come in off the Gulf. So some of those could have, you know, tropical storm force winds, but as far as persistent, you know, surge, eh, it looks more like an afternoon thunderstorm. Hopefully uh, is what they're going to get. So now we're talking about the peninsula. The peninsula is definitely, uh, you know, watching this thing. Uh, the latest euro. Let's just smack dab go right into the euro here because it's slowly showing uh, dropping pressures a little bit. The uh, euro comes in at 991 landfall. This is all tropical tidbits, by the way. I 
always mean to mention them first. We, we love Levi's stuff. We try to use it in all our presentations here. Uh, TravelTibbets.com. Uh, but but the, the common theme that I'm seeing is we're not seeing a lot of uh, weakening going through the state. 991 exits out at 992. Uh, and again, these are going to be developing storms around a center, possibly if this thing develops a center core. So, you know, West Central Florida, just pay attention. Thursday, we can see that. And then, of course, this thing turns up. This is going to combine with a frontal boundary that's coming in and... We're going to see storms and heavy rain uh, race their way up through the Carolinas. And like I said, by Saturday, it might be long gone. This is Saturday morning, long gone. So squally, stormy weather for Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, you know. Uh, but as far as major impacts, eh, I don't know. You know, we, well, we're going to have those occasional power outages. We'll have those occasional squalls or tornadoes possibly coming off the Atlantic. But it's going to be fast moving good news let's take out my buddy the icon i love the icon the icon does a great job icon showing a 988 uh, 983 system a uh, little bit more south of the cape this would be overnight hours into thursday morning cuts through the state and does that turn up through georgia and uh, here's friday morning for example and uh, friday evening and saturday morning it's long gone so cold weather's on the way Big time cold weather this weekend coming, so you got that to look forward to. All right, so there's that. Uh, that's the latest. We got a new update coming out at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I suspect we're going to see more inland watches and warnings pop popping up for the Florida Peninsula. Then we're going to probably see things shift, possibly to the parts of the Panhandle, and uh, as the system moves on, we do have some surge maps to look at. Current surge map, uh, three to five feet what they're expecting here on a large chunk from Georgia all the way down to North uh, Palm Beach there. So these these maps get updated too um, every time there's an NAC update. So there you go. Everything's there. All right. So pay attention close. This thing's going to be here, here soon and gone soon. And cold weather's on the way, right? All right. So as always, thanks for watching here on YouTube. Uh, we'll be live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern for a live tonight. We'll be live tomorrow morning, 919 Eastern tomorrow. I am going over to uh, Volusia County and chase the storm. So we'll be doing everything remotely uh, starting tomorrow night and Wednesday when we expect landfall. So two more lives for sure, and uh, we'll, we'll keep everybody updated, all right? So thanks for watching. Bye.